Hey, Concrete Crazies, my name is Tyler Lay, and I'm obsessed with concrete. Today in this video, we're going to talk about truck mixers versus volumetric mixers. What's the differences between the two? And I will make a prediction about the future of mixing concrete. This is a question from Nicholas. Thank you so much, Nicholas, for the question. He wanted me to compare truck mix concrete versus volumetric concrete. He wants to know why is it more volumetric mixer mixers used in the United States? This is a picture of a concrete batch plant. It weighs out very accurately known amounts of rock, sand, cement, fly ash, and water admixtures and puts it inside this concrete truck. As this concrete truck drives to the job site, it spins, okay? And it's as it's spinning, it's actually mixing. If we could actually pull off the side of the truck like this, you'd see inside of it, it's made of these fins. So they'll actually mix hard as soon as they add the materials to try to mix it up. Then they'll drive to the job site, mixing very, very slowly to keep agitating the concrete. And then again, typically, they'll mix hard again before they start to discharge the concrete. That is how a batch plant and truck mix operation is done. Now a volumetric mixer looks a little bit different. It actually combines everything together. Here's a typical picture. It's got one bin for sand, one bin for rock, one bin for cement. It's got a place for its water, and then it's got this thing called the mixing auger. Actually, as all these materials are mixed together on this belt, they're mixed with an auger as they come down this chute, and it comes out the end perfectly mixed, awesome concrete. The problem is it's not always perfect, and it's not always mixed right. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Here's some video about how a volumetric truck works. As you can see on the belt, there's sand and rock piled up. And as the belt spins, a known amount of rock and sand is actually put down the chute. Cement actually comes out. A known amount of cement and water comes out as well. And this thing goes through the auger. Let's watch what happens. What comes out the other end? Beautiful concrete, of course. Look at that. They pick it up. Going to go put it in place. So now we're going to compare head-to-head -head these different procedures. The batch plant truck mix on the left, the volumetric mixer on the right. We'll talk about each one of these. Accurate batching. It, the edge definitely goes to the batch plant and truck mix. When it comes to these volumetric mixers, it's very challenging to get them dialed in and keep them dialed in. You have to have operators of these trucks that are pretty sophisticated and that know what they're doing, and they have to calibrate regularly. I'm not saying that can't be done, I'm just saying that can sometimes be a challenge, especially if you don't have a lot of sophisticated labor. Now let's talk about mixing quality. When something comes out of a ready mix truck, it's if they follow the procedure right, it should be mixed correctly. With a volumetric mixer, sometimes the auger spinning is just not enough. This can sometimes change your admixture dosages, how things behave. You can get very inconsistent concrete but you can get inconsistent concrete from other mixing procedures as well. Now let's say we're dealing with complicated batches. The batch plant truck mix definitely, definitely have the edge here, for sure. If you wanna look at several different types of aggregates, if you wanna use maybe fly ash and slag, something else, and you don't have a blended cement, you don't have a cement where they're all blended together beforehand, then a batch plant truck mix is totally the way to go. Volumetric mix are just, just can't do something this complicated. Now, you can figure out ways to make that happen though with the volumetric mixer. You can pre-blend your aggregates, okay? You can pre-blend your fly ash, slag, whatever else you, you hope to use within your cement. All that's possible. It's just not common in the United States to use pre-blended aggregates or pre-blended binder material. If you wanna talk about calibration, the batch plant and truck mix takes a lot less calibration or a lot less regular calibration than your vol volumetric mixer. If you're trying to do high volume, if you're trying to produce a lot of concrete really fast, 
then batch plant truck mix is the way to go. Now, if you want to talk about cost, all in, the cost for everything, the volumetric mixer is totally the way to go. It is much, much less expensive. You have to deal with rapid setting materials, something that you want to get hard quickly, like 4,000 PSI in about four hours. The volumetric mixer is really a good way to go. You can mix on site, place, and they can start finishing right away. You don't have to worry about haul time. You don't have to worry about retarders or bringing the mix back to life once it gets to the site with a truck mixer. You get a lot less waste with a volumetric mixer. You literally can dial in the exact amount of material that you want. And anything you don't use, you can haul off and drive back and use it again next time. That is pretty awesome. The cleanup is much better and much easier with a volumetric mixer. It's just better all the way around like that. There's a lot of benefits with a volumetric mixer. So why don't we use volumetric mixers more? They have issues with accurate batching. In a volumetric mixer, it's tough to do moisture corrections on the fly and get your water content dialed in exactly right. You're gonna need lots and lots of trucks if you're gonna deliver a lot of concrete fast. And people have already invested heavily in central batch plants and some kind of truck mixers, at least in the United States, and they're not likely to change. But I can tell you one thing that is likely to change. There's a lot of stuff about mixing that we just don't know. There's a lot of things they call the high efficiency mixers, where people are mixing their concrete for only about 30 seconds, then dumping them out and it's expecting to get uniform performance and behavior. And from what I see in my experiences in the field, it's not that way. If you mix only about 15 seconds longer, things get better. People scream and holler and say, you're, you're, you're costing me money when you make me, make me mix for 15 seconds. Let's be honest. It's 15 seconds for something that we want to last generations. I predict there's gonna be a lot bigger focus on mixing in the future. And I think volumetric mixers show a lot of potential, but there's some hurdles they have to overcome before they become widely used. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like this video, share this video with other people, leave me a comment. Do you use truck mix? Do you use volumetric mixers and why? Take care. Bye.